นโมทัสสะบโกอาโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตสะนโมทัสสะบโกอาโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตสะนโมทัสสะบโกอาโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตสะทิรวาระบุตรเซมซีรีส์ดัมมัตท็อปนัมเบอร์36 causes of beautiful consciousness <coughs> feeling วิดนา nature of prompting And association with knowledge play significant roles in arising of the beautiful consciousness. <coughs> Once consciousness with feeling arises. One would react to it by taking wholesome or unwholesome action, which forms karma. These karmic actions are initiated. Simultaneously, which means unprompted, or deliberately, or pushed, means prompted. Beautiful or evil roots will occur. Based on the association or non-association with knowledge, y a n a That's a general statement. How the good roots are the Bad roots could arise. So let's see the causal relations of beautiful consciousness and these factors, which are feeling, prompting, and knowledge. The first one, feeling vedana. Feelings play a significant role in shaping type of consciousness because whenever a consciousness or whatever kind of consciousness arises, it arises together with feeling. That's why it is the first one, first important factor in the classification of consciousness. Facing or encountering many desirable objects will give one joy. Or pleasurable feeling. This joy could be a natural or perceived joy. Natural or perceived. Yes, 
to give you an example blue cheese for people who likes blue cheese it is a pleasant object a pleasant food but it becomes an unpleasant food or object for people who dislikes it the same object could be pleasurable or not pleasurable based on the likes and dislikes or based on the perception of the person who is engaging with it that's what it means by perceived joy the other one is the natural joy natural joy is as it is the true nature of an object manure stinks rose smells beautiful that is a natural as it is the other one is perceived based on likes and dislikes the repeated exposure of the good and pleasant things will give rise to a habit of cheerfulness if a person is meeting engaging with many pleasant things you'll feel pleasant joyful so eventually that will become a habit a cheerful state of mind but it needs a lot of repeated exposure that is one cause of arising of joy another one is rebirth consciousness associated with pleasant feeling will also place a person in a state of cheerfulness as say a child was born and that child is if you look at him most of the time he is smiling he is happy that mean that child rebirth consciousness is associated with pleasant feeling is a product of the past life and also people with a mental state or mental factors of not being too serious can look at things with a lifness those kind of people are more cheerful these are the causes or the reasons why a person is cheerful joyful and happy so this related with the pleasant objects another one is the unremarkable or ordinary objects of needs that will also give rise to a neutral feeling that say every morning you have a a toast and a coffee every day every day toast and coffee toast and coffee 
that is a ordinary object. It's not distinctive. It is unremarkable. If that's the case, you will have a neutral feeling. Let's say one day you make a, a French toast. Then there's a very distinctive looks as well as flavor that's become remarkable, distinctive. And if that's the case, compared to toast and coffee, you will have a pleasant feeling. So when an object has a distinctive nature, it gives pleasant feeling. And if it is a ordinary, unremarkable nature, it gives rise to neutral feeling. So that is one cause of how a neutral feeling arises. Of course, another one is rebirth consciousness. Rebirth consciousness with equanimity. Not with joy, but with equanimity will give rise to a neutral feeling. Just to take an example of a child who is born, that child didn't cry or scream or smile and joyful, but more like serene and looking at everything, but in a very serene mode. That child Rebirth consciousness is associated with equanimity, upaka feeling, upaka vidana. Persons of serious nature, deep thinkers, philosophical, and one who does not smile much. Those people experience neutral feeling. So these are the causes how a neutral feeling arise in a person. The first one was joy. This is neutral feeling. And of course, there are three types of feeling. Third one is unpleasant feeling, of course. Undesirable object brings up unpleasant feeling whenever you encounter a undesirable object, situation, condition, one feels unpleasant, unpleasant feeling in Pali, domina sa, domina sa. And if one has a repeated and frequented exposure to those unpleasant objects, one will become a, a grumpy person. One will form a grumpy habit. These types of grumpy people have rebirth consciousness associated with dissatisfaction. If we take the, the child as an example, the child born and is always screaming and yelling and kicking. 
even though you might have changed a diaper, feed lots of milk. Try to keep as comfortable as possible, still screaming, yelling, kicking. That child's rebirth consciousness is associated with dissatisfaction. Dosa. And these kind of peoples are short tempered, super sensitive, and also they have lesser knowledge relative to others. Their views are narrow. Because anger narrow down the vision of the mind. An angry person has or will only see a very narrow point of view. All the possibilities and potentials and person with anger cannot see them. That's what anger did. It inhibits the point of view. Just zoom in into one angle and nothing else. So, we talk about three types of feeling. Pleasant, joyful, okay. equanimous, neutral, serene, and unpleasant feeling. And in here, the most important thing or the most crucial thing is undesirable object. Okay. The most crucial thing is undesirable object. Not to arise quite often. These, this nature is dependent on the past karma. You don't have much control. Whether you see or engage a lot of desirable objects or undesirable objects in this life is conditioned by the actions one has done in the past life. So that one, you can't do much about it. However, one can influence the present moment. You can't influence the past. You can't do anything about the past. But you still have the power to influence, to streamline the present moment. Mindfulness and wise attention. Having mindfulness and wise attention at present moment will give rise to a beautiful consciousness, will give rise to beautiful roots. You have to have a roots to be, have a beautiful consciousness. So this is how feeling play the role in the arising of a beautiful consciousness. So let's look at another factor. It's the nature of prompting. Okay. First of all, let's look at non-prompting. A sankarika. A sankarika, non prompting. 
the spontaneous or not spontaneous act shapes the type of consciousness. Rebirth consciousness with unprompted nature bear spontaneity. Also, good health, durable to hot and cold. Having significant goal-oriented mind, disciplined, and having nutritious food promotes spontaneous activities. These are the right here, right now. Okay. And if you have a good health, you are not too sensitive to change of heat and cold, hot and cold. You are always goal-oriented, significant goal-oriented, disciplined person, eat nutritious food that will promote spontaneous activities, in other words, unprompted actions, automatic actions. That is, Atsinkarika. The next one is prompting. Sat Sankarika. With the prompt and without the prompt. At Sankarika, Sat Sankarika. Both sense of rebirth consciousness. Or you can call it Bowinga. With a weak mind requires prompting. Or you can say it needs a little nudge and a push or deliberation to decide and do something. Always a little hesitant. Didn't comes out automatically. People who are not healthy and also who are very sensitive, high sensitivity to heat and cold. And also don't have much desire for goals that need great efforts. Do not want to train to form a good habit. Malnutritious and susceptibility to climate will promote hesitancy in actions. Those are the people who are Sankarika, you need to be prompted to do anything. So this is the another factor. First one, feeling. Second one is nature of prompting. Now, the third and the final one is this causes to associate with knowledge will go because there are a few. So I'll put a heading causes to associate with knowledge. In Pali, Jnana Sampyukta.
some people consciousness with knowledge and some people consciousness with knowledge arises more than the other. We all have one or the other, but some a lot more than the other. It is due to karma of the past lives, which is conducive to possessing wisdom, jnana. In the past life, you do a lot of things that is conducive to possessing wisdom. Those people have a lot more consciousness with knowledge arises, higher frequency. It is more pronounced for those who wish to have wisdom in future lives. Who wished to have wisdom in future lives whenever they have done a meritorious deed. To put it simply, whenever you do a, a good deed, wholesome deed, meritorious deed, always dedicated, may this be the cause for having wisdom. May this be the cause to attain wisdom. You purposely dedicated your meritorious deeds for wisdom, jnana. Also, teaching others, especially teaching Dharma to others, to expand their minds or giving donations to such causes creates intelligence. That's another cause. The more you spread knowledge and information for others, your intelligence grow. And also, the more you support organizations who promote education, also make you gain better intelligence in next life. Karma. Wholesome karma for intelligence building. Such actions of past lives, okay, these are all in the past life, produce frequent arising of consciousness accompanied by knowledge or wisdom in this life. If you have done that in the past life, you will be a very sharp, intelligent, rooted person. Also, developed mind with five controlling mental faculties. Those are the ones we are developing from day one of our meditation. What are they? Confidence, right of foot, Mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. Okay? If your mind is developed with those things, a higher frequency of arising of consciousness accompanied by knowledge. You'll get that. Develop your mind. Five controlling mental faculties, 
you have more wisdom associated consciousness arising with a great higher frequency. In general, of course, if you look at a lifespan of a person, normal lifespan, zero to a hundred. In general, the mid-range of life, let's pick up a number, 40 to 55, is where one reaches the maturity of understanding about life based on your surrounding. Around 40 to 55, you have the maturity of understanding about life. Because you have accumulated a whole wealth of data to process through. One becomes a good problem solver with penetrating knowledge during these periods. So your life experience and this life also plays a role. Another one, another cause, distancing from mental defilements through concentration meditation or vipassana meditation, either one is also a worthy cause. To become knowledgeable, practice samatha meditation, practice vipassana meditation. You will become more and more intelligent because clarity of mind arises when mental defilements are at bay. When you practice meditation, you keep your mental defilements at bay. Because of that, your mind is clear. Because of the clarity, you see things clearly and precisely as they really are. So that's another cause. So quite a few causes for knowledge or wisdom. To sum it up, we have known the causes of developing beautiful consciousness from various angles. And plan on a roadmap for our future lives. What kind of road you want to have in your future life depends on how you are traveling the journey of this life and there are causes to do and there are things to avoid. So we can plan our roadmap for our future lives before reaching the final goal. Nibbana. So let's put our best effort and strive on without delay. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you very much.